Hello, this is Red and April, and welcome to our off-grid home build. In this video, we finish the final rough-in plumbing for the master bathroom, and do the footers for the master bathroom and bedroom area, and basically just get the pad ready to start pouring concrete. Before finishing the rough-in plumbing in the master bathroom, we had to move our temporary bathroom that we had built in this location. Uh, the reason it's setting on the pad in the area where the master bathroom is, is because when we built it, uh, we hadn't finished the footer on that side uh, that we're going to place it permanently or kind of for the rest of the job. And so we weren't able to put it there. This was the only location where I could tie it into the plumbing. And so anyway, we built it knowing that we would have to move it later. And so here we are getting ready to move it. I just uh, screwed on some boards kind of sticking out the side so that several people could grab a hold of it. And we were able to get it moved over with the help of some family. We moved it to a location that's outside of the pad but still close by. So we'll be able to access it easily, but won't need to move it again for the duration of the build. And here we are starting the rough-in work for the master bathroom, um, digging the trenches here. And as you can see, the ground is, is quite hard, which uh, makes me happy. Um, we had, I had compacted this the best I could with a backhoe, and it actually set over through the monsoon season. So it basically got rained on uh, the entire monsoon season and really settled down and got really hard which is exactly what you want for a foundation, so that's great, but the digging is a little rough there. Anyway, just digging out some, tr some trenches here, uh, mainly for the gray water, which I'm using the black poly pipe for. The um, black water, or the septic line, is already in place. You can see that white pipe sticking up there. That's where the toilet will be. Everything but the toilet here will go into our gray water system, so the shower and the uh, bathroom faucet will go to our gray water system and we'll use that to you know water plants on the property. This gray water system is fairly shallow at this point in the pad since it all kind of runs down towards the center and then down and out and of course it's entirely gravity fed and we want it to exit the pad at a high enough elevation to where we can still use gravity to get it out to the plants that we want to water in our yard and stuff. And so anyway, it needs to be fairly high in the pad, and so that's why it's not very deep here. I'm trying to keep a good, you know, quarter bubble uh, of slope the entire way to get it out of the pad. So here I am, just kind of making sure it's all uh, the, the proper elevation and slope, and getting that kind of... I use boards to kind of get it propped up and in place until I get it all glued in, and then I kind of start compacting the earth and packing it, and as I go... Then I move those boards later on and get it entirely compacted and compressed and, and settled in place. And right here I'm working on the shower drain and putting in a little underground P-trap. So that'll all be ready to go when I get ready to pour my shower base. So I have it run to where it needs to run to. I've got one line going over to the bathroom faucet and one going to the shower drain. I've got it all propped up and leveled and so now I'm ready to start kind of backfilling, seeding it. Uh, so putting in some, some good soil that doesn't have uh, any rocks in it or anything to where it's made sure it's, it's bedded real nice so that over time, you know, you don't want any rocks right up against it. So anyway, getting some good nice soil and starting to tamp that in and get it bedded real good, checking my level occasionally to make sure the level hasn't changed and I've got that nice quarter bubble of slope uh, the entire way. As you can see, I've removed my props or the, the boards that I'm using to maintain a level once I've got enough dirt in there that it'll hold it in place and then finish backfilling those locations and and get it totally buried. Well I've got all the plumbing roughed in now and I'm starting to work on the footers for the bathroom and master bedroom area. So I wanted the interior walls to be load-bearing and so I wanted a deeper footer that went all the way down through the gravel layer to hit the, the earthen layer and so I'm forming and pouring those footers separately. And so I'm just getting all that prepared so I got to go all the way across the pad and then the dividers for the bathroom and the bathroom closet here. Of course, when I was doing this, we were still planning on, you know, using aircrete for our exterior and interior walls. And so that's kind of the primary reason that I was doing these footers is because I was planning on pouring aircrete on them. Uh, so, you know, plans changed and, and we're going a different direction now. Uh, but they'll still be kind of nice to have in a way because it'll allow us to, we're, you know, we moved to going to a, just a poured concrete floor. And so these will kind of 
uh, these footers that we're pouring here will act as forms and allow us to pour the pad in smaller sections, so it's not all bad. This is our pile of old form boards that we've been using and reusing and reusing over and over again. Got a lot of good use out of this wood. Um, it's still perfectly serviceable though. I just keep cutting it into smaller and smaller pieces as I use it for different forms for different parts of the project. But it's good to get multiple uses out of it. I might mention here that we didn't get any footage of it, but we did make the electrical connections in the solar room and at the house. So I now have power at the property. Uh, so this panel is live. And so now I don't have to run extension cords over from the shipping containers. I can just run all the power right off of the electric box here on the pad. Super nice. Took quite a bit of doing to get these forms in place. Just quite a bit of carpentry and getting them all, you know, level and in the exact place where I wanted the walls to be. So uh, just took a little bit of time, but went together well. We did need to do this part. Uh, we need to get these footers in place before we could finish filling the pad up with rock. As you can see, the rest of the pad, the rock is in place. It's leveled. It's ready to go. This is the final section of the pad that I need to get these footers poured before I can finish the rock fill and then get ready to do the actual concrete pour. And here we are harvesting some sand from our pond that we built earlier in the year. It's been cool to get, be able to get all of our sand out of it. We've harvested 15 or 20 barrels uh, full of sand out of it so far and, and been able to use it uh, to make the footers for our house. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, so here we are getting ready to start mixing the concrete for these footers that, that I just framed. Um, I actually really like making concrete. I've, I've got used to it now, got into a habit and kind of have a little system in place. It's kind of nice, good physical labor. It's kind of Zen type work and, and I enjoy doing it. So just mixing up some batches and pouring in the forms. It's actually really easy concrete to do since you're doing small little batches and there's not a lot of finish work since you're just doing footers. So pretty fun work actually. So I'm using a 1 2 3 ratio here, which is one part concrete to two parts sand to three parts gravel, which is a high strength mix, which I believe is 4,000 or 4,500 PSI, supposedly. So it's a good strong mix. I, and I also did use rebar uh, in the footers, so trying to make it you know, as strong as possible. And so here we are just kind of finishing off the last bit. As you can see, we kind of left some spots where the doors will be um, so we can make a nice transition. So we kind of poured about an inch and a half low where the doors will be. Here I finally got around to kind of backfilling around the back porch. So I've kind of smoothed out the dirt and wet it down and I'm compacting it with our little compactor uh, so that it doesn't erode over time. And this is pretty much done now, getting it nice and compacted hard. We did build the pad up about a foot on one side and two or three feet on the other side. And so we've got a nice uh, grade sloping away from the house, which will take the water away from the house and keep it nice and well drained and dry. Now I'm working on finishing up filling the master bedroom and bathroom area with the gravel, trying to get that four inches of gravel in there. Like I say, this is the last bit that we had to do before the whole pad is entirely covered with the, covered with the gravel layer. Been getting down below freezing every night so we have to cover up our concrete and so it gets a little chaotic we have all kinds of blankets and tarps and old uh, worn out air mattresses that we use to cover up the uh, forms any kind of concrete that we have drying to keep it from freezing at night today is december 4th i'm starting to look for my christmas decorations i know they're in the shipping container somewhere i've already determined where they are not i'll just have to do a little more digging and see if we can at least find some lights, get things decorated. So Red has been working hard on the foundation, been making lots of progress, so I'll show you how that's been going. 
we've kept these footers covered and in their forms for about a week now, so they're now you know cured uh, sufficiently that we can remove the forms. This is probably my favorite part of you know the concrete process is removing the forms. It's so very satisfying to take the forms off and see the dried uh, concrete all nice and solid there. So working on that here and getting ready to pour the gravel in these sections to kind of finish up our pad preparations. One of the last things to do before pouring the gravel in here is to cover up the exposed pipe that we have sticking up. And so we have, you know, we have white pipe, we have the ABS black pipe for the drain system, we have our PEC sticking up, and all that needs to be covered to protect it from the concrete that we're going to pour later. And the part that sticks up above that needs to be protected from the UV exposure to the sun because it'll damage it over time. And so just trying to wrap plastic around everything and get it protected and ready to go. As I bring in this gravel, I'm trying to achieve a level of about four and a half inches below the final you know, grade level of the poured pad, which will give me an inch for foam and then three and a half inches for concrete. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just getting as close as I can by eyeball, kind of using you know, the forms or the footers that I've already poured as kind of a reference point. And then at some point I, I bring a string across the pad and then measure down from the string and get it all fairly level. And then I come back in with my in with my eight inch tamper and tamp everything down and compact it so it gets it all nice and smooth and flat. Uh, very satisfying to see that all done here. So of course our original plan was to pour aircrete for the exterior walls, and so consequently the level of the footer didn't have to be perfect. It could be a little rough because we're just going to be pouring a wall on top of it anyway. However, now that we've changed our plans to go with a more traditional stick-built style wall, the level becomes very important of the footer. And so I had to go back and recheck everything to see how, you know, to get exact measurements on the elevation and levelness of our footer. And so we did that with the transit. Uh, we set up a transit and checked it. There was one section here where the forms kind of blew out a little bit or they kind of warped and distorted and we were worried that we would be, you know, pretty far off in that area. We knew it wasn't perfect, and so we were really curious to get in there and check and see how good it ended up uh, now, that, now that it matters. So we checked the, the entire thing with the transit, you know, went around the perimeter every five or six feet, and then also did the interior footers, and actually the results were better than I expected. I was extremely pleased. We were, for the most part, within three quarters of an inch which was better than I expected. I know, you know, people that do this for a living would probably be appalled with the three quarter inch variants. But, you know, since I wasn't trying that hard to get it perfect, since we were just gonna be pouring the walls anyway, um, I was very pleased to be within, you know, that. There was one high spot that was actually an inch and a quarter out, which I'll have to do something about. Uh, but for the most part, it's within three quarter of an inch. And I think I can do a little shimming under the walls to get it pretty much dead on uh, without it being, you know, too big of a deal. This footer and the interior footers were a little rough, like I say, since I wasn't taking great care originally to finish them, since it was just going to be a poured wall. But now that we're, you know, changing directions, I want them to be as smooth and even as humanly possible. And so I have a grinder that has a diamond coated disc that works awesome for this. And so I was able to go over the entire footer and the interior footers with this diamond coated disc and take off the high spots and smooth it out. And this thing worked amazing. I mean, it just cut through concrete like butter. It was really cool. Uh, made a huge amount of dust, so I made sure to wear, you know, respiratory protection and everything. But 
it worked really well and I was able to get it all smoothed out and more level and ready to start going up with the walls. Well, we finally used up all the sand from our pond and had to order another load in to start working on the concrete pour for the pad itself. Coming up in our next video, we'll be starting to actually hand mix and pour our own concrete pad. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and join us again next time. Wishing you all a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year.